Moving on, every year, CTC presents the Leaders for Change Award to one individual or organization who has made a positive impact on the Tamil community in Canada or internationally. The Leaders for Change Award honors the unique contribution of an individual who through his or her exceptional vision, perseverance, and commitment has redefined or strengthened the need for change in our society. The recipient of this award will be someone who has demonstrated an effort to strive for change in a way that positively impacted the lives of others. This award recognizes a determined individual whose efforts are characterized by a dedication to leadership, a vision for change, and a desire to enhance the lives of others. To introduce the recipient of this year's Leaders for Change Award, I'd like to welcome Ms. Vani Selvaraja. Ms. Selvaraja is a practicing lawyer and former board of director of CTC, who has played an important role in CTC's international advocacy efforts to seek peace and justice in Sri Lanka. She has also served as a board of director for Lawyers' Rights Watch Canada, an organization of lawyers who promote human rights around the world. Vanakam and good evening. The Leaders for Change Award recognizes individuals whose efforts are characterized by dedication to leadership, a vision for change, and a desire to enhance the lives of others. Mr. Martin Sturzinger is one such individual. Martin has worked closely on peace efforts in Sri Lanka and has been a great pillar of support for the Tamil community in many ways, including its advocacy efforts. Upon reaching his official retirement age, Martin very recently retired from the peace and Human Rights Division of the Swiss Federal Department of Foreign Affairs as a senior advisor. No introduction to Martin would be complete without his first encounter with Sri Lanka and the Tamil's quest for justice, equality, and self-rule. This takes us back to July of 1983. Martin, a young undergraduate student at the University of Zurich at the time, was visiting Sri Lanka as a tourist. During that time, he witnessed the atrocities and the horrific events of Black July firsthand. What he witnessed in Sri Lanka in 83 would subsequently change the course of his life. Upon his return to Switzerland, Martin started reading more about the conflict to better understand the issues faced by Tamils. In the years that followed, Martin would visit Sri Lanka at least once a year to continue writing papers, articles, and even publish books about the Sri Lankan conflict and Tamil refugees. It was also during these years that Switzerland and other parts of Europe started seeing an influx of Tamil refugees fleeing Sri Lanka. Martin's detailed reports and writing contributed to the Swiss and German public understanding of the Tamil issue and benefited Tamils who claimed refugee status in parts of Europe. His writing and expertise in Sri Lanka did not go unnoticed by the Swiss Foreign Ministry. Martin was subsequently appointed as the advisor for peace building at the Swiss Embassy in Sri Lanka from 2003 to 2008. And using his official capacity there, Martin continued to advocate for peace and started participating in various peace building efforts. In fact, when the war came to an end in May of 2009, Switzerland, as many of us know, was at the forefront in post-conflict reconciliation efforts and made many parties come together for meaningful dialogue. Upon his return to Switzerland, Martin actively engaged with the diaspora. He has assisted the Global Tamil Forum and CTC on numerous occasions. Over the following years, Martin would lead and facilitate various peace building initiatives, many of which were attended by CTC and GTF, including ones held in Singapore, Berlin, and Zurich. Martin has always been and continues to be an invaluable advisor, always just a phone call away, willing to engage, assist, and work with us. Through his unwavering interest in the issues faced by Tamils, his thorough knowledge and leadership, Martin has brought about many changes to advancing peace and promoting the need for sustainable political solution in Sri Lanka. Tamils worldwide, especially those at CTC, are grateful for Martin's tireless advocacy, his dedication, and his contribution towards the plight of the Tamil people. His work has been inspiring to us all, and we remain confident that it will continue in his retirement years. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and sincere privilege to announce to you the recipient of this year's Leaders for Change Award, distinguished author, ardent advocate, and a dear friend, Mr. Martin Sturzinger. Wanakam, and uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank the Canadian Tamil Congress 
and especially its board of directors and the advisory council uh, for this really unexpected and incredible honor to get the Leaders for Change Award for 2022 of the Canadian Tamil Congress. This award comes as a complete surprise to me. I'm still overwhelmed and aware that there are many others who would deserve this recognition. Uh, as Vani said, uh, when I went on a holiday in Sri Lanka in July 1983, I had no clue that this would be a life-changing event. As a matter of fact, I had not much interest for the country and uh, its political problems. Uh, I was in the upcountry when we heard rumors about riots in Colombo and attacks. And uh, the next we learned was that there was a curfew announced. And when we reached Candy, just before the curfew started, uh, the town was already burning. I was shocked. I was a tourist then, uh, fairly young. Uh, but I also started immediately taking pictures because I felt this was an event that deserved uh, worldwide attention. And uh, I quickly learned then later that the houses that were attacked were houses by Tamils and that the firefighters were not really eager to douse the flames. So I started reading newspapers and uh, was puzzled to see that President Chayawardene actually blamed the Tamils for these events and then this led to even worse attacks. Back home in Switzerland, I felt guilty because I studied history at the time but frankly, I had no clue what would expect me in Sri Lanka. So I started reading about the conflict, and a year later, I wrote a paper at university. This was a time, almost 40 years ago, when Tamils started coming to Switzerland as refugees. Right-wing parties quickly labeled them as economic asylum seekers, and I felt that one should actually explain the roots of the conflict that I had learned about by reading books, and offered a report to a prestigious magazine that turned me into a journalist, so to say. So they showed interest. And in 1985, I went back to Sri Lanka and uh, Madras, uh, today Chennai, uh, to talk to resource persons and to do research for my article. I've met many people for this. Among them, Amita Lingam and Yogeswaran of the TULF, Bala Singam, Bala Kumar, Parachisingam Joseph, who was then not even an MP, and I traveled to the east of the country and also to Jaffna. From then on, I kept on writing about Sri Lanka. In 1995, I wrote a book. Two years later, I started working part-time for the Swiss Refugee Council as a country analyst. In 2003, as Wani has said, I joined the Swiss Federal Department of Foreign Affairs and was the advisor for peacebuilding at the embassy in Colombo for five years. Except for three years as advisor for peacebuilding in Nepal, I have ever since been involved in formulating and implementing the Swiss peace and human rights policy in Sri Lanka. We all know that the success has been rather mixed. So many people have died or have been killed, not only the ones I mentioned, Amita Lingam, Yogeswaran, Bala Singam, Bala Kumar, or Paracha Singam Joseph, whom I had met in 1985, but also Nilan Elvan, Kethi Shloganathan, Tamil Selvan, Puli Devan, Sivaram, Lasanta Vikramatunga, I can't name them all. People I knew, and some of them, to some of them, I was really close. Too many people have died in Sri Lanka. Too many have been tortured, traumatized, and too many have lost husbands and wives, sons and daughters, fathers and mothers, relatives and friends. And too many were forced to leave this beautiful country. It is a miracle to me that many of them have not given up and continue to be engaged for a just, peaceful and prosperous homeland where everybody has equal rights Human rights are protected and reconciliation is fostered. I admire the perseverance and dedication of the members of the diaspora who continue to be engaged for their country of origin. This is why this award 
means so much to me. It is an award presented by persons who themselves have contributed to change in Sri Lanka and actually much more than myself. That the Canadian Tamil Congress decided to present me this award humbles me. At the same time, I consider the award as a request to double my efforts. Thank you all for the trust and this incredible honor. I really admire the work, dedication and achievements of the Canadian Tamil Congress and I wish you success, courage, hardiness and of course to all of you a very happy Thai Pongal and a Tamil Heritage Month. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and congratulations, Mr. Martin Sturzinger on being the recipient of this year's Leaders for Change Award.